over the new year. And as you've already heard from Oladeo, who was praying earlier today, we want to join with you and support you in the season that you're going through. Whether it is to give a witness, a testimony of God's goodness, we want to encourage you to write down your praise note. And you've got a section there. Or if you're traveling through a difficult time, we actually want to pray for you and support you in prayer. And our team, as you've heard already, through the week, pray over each and every one of these connection cards. And of course, you can think about, what is my next step? So we also have a section down the bottom for ministry involvement. So if God has been prompting you in any particular area, whether it be children, set up, pack up, whatever it looks like, you've also got an area that you can fill in there as well. So as you're filling in your connection card, I'll fill in mine. Church News. Today is Missions Fund Sunday. Today our giving for our missions endeavours goes to our local Australian missions. And all missions giving to our local missions is income tax deductible. So if you want to use your red envelope, you can fill out your address details and we can send you off a receipt. Also, we have our regular tithes and offerings. Here at Hope we have three ways to give. You can give online like me and my family. You can pop some notes in the envelope or you can give after the service at our information desk. Whatever your method of giving, I want to encourage you from God's word today. And I'm reading from 2 Corinthians chapter 9. And you've probably heard these scriptures before about sowing and reaping and how we sow to actually reap. And that's a good thing, isn't it? So we actually deposit into God's kingdom for an eternal purpose. But then it goes down into the later verses in verse 11, and it says, you will be rich, you will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion so that it brings testimony of the goodness of God. Isn't that amazing? How God's economy actually works. That as we sow a seed and do so in faith, we see something that is of God that is remarkable, that enriches our lives. Isn't that good news? And that then encourages us to continue the good work, which is to deposit into God's kingdom, which is, has eternal value, eternal worth. So, why don't you join with me? Let's stand, grab a hold of your connection card, your tithes and offering envelopes, including your missions, giving... And let's pray. We thank you for your word, Lord. We thank you that you have an economy that allows us to be generous on every occasion. And because of this generosity that we now partner with you, we do so in thanksgiving to you, God, to highlight you in our lives and Heavenly Father, may all the praise and all the honour and all the glory be unto you and all those that believers said. Amen. The offering containers will come from this side of the auditorium all the way to the other. Let's continue to worship God.
Well, good morning and uh, welcome to Hope this morning. And uh, this is going to be a good week this week at Hope. And as we're spending this week, 7 o'clock, every night, and our connect groups are going to be leading each night, different connect groups, um, by our prayer and fasting. Right. And uh, you can do a full or half fast, whatever it is, but we want you to encounter God this week. And uh, so the church will be open from 7 p.m. tomorrow. Everyone say 7 p.m. Monday night. Everyone say. 7 p.m. Okay. And then next Sunday night we're going to have an anointing service where we will pray for everyone, anointing with oil, getting ready for a great brand new year. What do you reckon? Okay. Do you like the person you're sitting next to? Are you going to take them out for lunch today? <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. I'm glad you're so friendly and generous. Fantastic. So I want to talk about prayer today to open up the door for us of what we'll be doing this week. Is that okay? Um, I, I want to talk about it. Some of us are not used to prayer. And so I just want to provide some simple thoughts for you today and then we'll finish up. So today, I, I, I'm, I'm inspired. I'll just show the first picture uh, I was inspired. Janine and myself went to Yodio Island in South Korea and uh, to Dr. Cho's church. And uh, that's his building there. And that building holds just literally thousands of people. And underneath that, there's all of these other rooms and auditoriums. Underneath that uh, white tile there, see the big cross at the front? Yeah. Underneath that is St. Paul's Theatre. And that's a 2,000 seater underneath that. And then underneath that is around three or four hundred pastors who look after the place. God has blessed this church. And what inspired me is this church is based on prayer. Yeah, very good. That, that's their emphasis. That's what they do. So I've been there many times and I've, I've seen uh, that right hand side filled with buses because they don't have enough space for cars. There's a hotel on the right. And in the very early days when I went there, I stayed in the hotel and... I went into the room and uh, they didn't have any escape staircases, but there was a rope attached to the wall in my room, a rope. And I looked at it thinking, oh, okay, because every time I go to a hotel, I check out where the stairwells are, the escape routes, you know, and I go, okay, it's three doors down to the right. So a very unfamiliar place, I want to know if there's a fire. Well, this place didn't have any, but it had a rope. Everyone say a rope. And so I opened up the window. <laughs> I was four stories down. There is no way. There is no way I'm going to come over the window and use the rope to go downstairs. But hopefully it's all fixed up by now. But anyways, that particular church um, is really built on prayer. Massive church. Massive, massive church. And as you can see, it's Yaddy Island. It was a sand island. Palm is up there. And there's a great big mall where it used to be used um, for landing planes to take the parliamentarians away if the North Korean guys decide to come south for a holiday. And um, what happens is on every hour from this church, a bus leaves and goes to a place called Prayer Mountain. I'll just show you the picture of Prayer Mountain next shot. Uh, up there. Now, Prayer Mountain, if you can just see the above top right there, um, there's lots of buildings up there, many chapels in Korean, in Korean that says Pastor Paul is a wonderful preacher. Um, and there are massive, massive buildings up there. And that, that, that thing that's shaped like an ark is their main prayer place. And that will hold up to five to 6,000 people. And people go there with food and blankets and they'll just stay there and just pray for a night, a day, a week. And there's literally people sitting all through that auditorium. And sometimes there'll be an organised prayer meeting at a certain time. But there's just a lot of people praying and there's a whole lot of chapels. Now, notice there's greenery on either side of, the, of that main chapel. Well, in all of those areas, you can go to what is called a prayer grotto. Let's just have a next thing. And there's just a, seat, there's just a sign to show... Uh, all the different places at Prayer Mountain. It's right on the border of the North Korean border and it's just very interesting. You can climb one of the hills and hear the helicopters and everything. But there is a prayer grotto. Let's show the next image. Now there's, there are literally hundreds of these. And what you do is you go there, close the door, can 
go inside and you just pray. No distractions, no TV, no phones, no music, no internet, just you and God. And you spend hours and hours just um, encountering God in prayer. What do you think? Do you think we should start to build some of them here? <laughs> Lord, help this church. <laughs> so that's Prayer Mountain. And uh, we went there and like tourists, we took pictures. <laughs> and uh, you can spend time praying. But their whole emphasis uh, is on prayer. And we met the youth pastor at the time and they brought out these beautiful grapes and I just ate one and they just looked at me horrified. And I stopped, you know, I did something culturally wrong. You know when you do something culturally wrong in another country? And I, and I sat there and they took the grape and they peeled the grape. Oh. That's it. I got thrown out of the country after that. <laughs> so this morning I'm convinced I'm convinced that this is going to be a very good week. And I want to encourage you, even if you just come out for one night, or maybe you fast one meal or two meals, whatever you are comfortable with, can I encourage you, this is a great opportunity, a great way to start the year off, and great focus, the ability to to say, God, I want to see some change this year. I, I want a breakthrough in my life marriage, relationships, finance, whatever it may be, but beyond yourself, also for your church and everyone that calls this place home. What do you reckon? And so I want to talk about that because I think I'm convinced that people don't pray enough and they're not quite sure how to do it sometimes, okay? And um, some, if I were to ask you, you'd probably say, look, I, I understand I, I, I don't pray enough. I don't know how to do it sometimes. Or when I start to pray, I get bored. I get distracted. I start to think about other things. Anyone ever experienced that? You know, you get distracted? Yeah. Okay, how many people just get distracted? No, just, okay, we need to build how many grottos? Prayer grottos, okay? 40 prayer grottos, okay? <laughs> and I think some of us need to learn how to pray fervently. You know, and uh, I think that's important to make to make a difference. And some people wonder, does prayer work at all? And so, therefore, if you believe that, you're not going to pray. Okay, but also sometimes, uh, and especially this week, we are encouraging everyone to pray. And sometimes it's scary for some people to pray in public. Do, do you know what I mean? And you, you, I don't want to say anything wrong, but the good thing is you're with family and with loved people. And if you say something stupid, everyone will pray and won't listen to a word you say. Okay. (laughs) But come on, I was raised in a... I was raised where my family had a King James Version. And we spoke Australian at home, but when we prayed, we prayed King James. Do you know what I mean? And, And I kind of thought that was the proper way to pray. You know, you use... King James... Who doesn't know what King James language is? Oh, you're all highly educated. Okay. But, you know, it is odd. It is odd because for many reasons, um, imagine if we still use the King James Version talking to one another today. And yet we kind of go into that mode sometimes when we pray. Just, Just think for a moment. If my daughter came up to me and said... Thou hast blessed me with food and tidings, and you giveth and take away of my pocket money. But today I draweth near to thee, so thy will putteth money in my hand. In English it would be, Dad, give me some money, okay? I beseech thee, thou shalt loan me thy car. And I would say, Whosoever shall ask, whereupon she goeth. I don't have a clue what I'm saying. Okay. And you shall say, hearken, she goeth out to abide with her friends. No one talks like that.